It seems like every time I release a League of Legends support guide, Riot always finds a way to nerf the strategy within a few weeks. In February, I released a Maokai support guide, which was followed by three patches of huge nerfs. In March, I released a Zyra support guide, which was followed by a nerf to both Zazak's Realm Spike and Imperial Mandate. Now, I don't want to get all main character syndrome here, but it is a little disheartening to know that my champion pool and strategies are nerfed so soon after I release a guide. In all honesty though, it's more likely that I've just been studying patch notes, examining LOL analytics websites, and doing some personal playtesting to figure out what best suits my playstyle and is OP in the current metas. In patch 14.6, Riot finally decided to appease the vocal ADC community and decided to buff crit and armor pen items such as Infinity Edge and Lord Doms. To be fair, ADCs have been a role with little agency for quite some time now, so a crit buff to their class was warranted. They may have overdone the crit buffs a tiny bit and had to scale down the cost efficiency of items such as Static Shiv, but overall, crit ADCs are back in the meta. Of course, this doesn't mean that ADCs have any more early game agency than before, but they are now relevant, even in the late game, to pump out a ton of damage. With these recent crit buffs, this also subsequently means that the rise of enchanters are slowly coming back into the meta. This includes enchanter champions such as Lulu, Nami, and Sona, who have all received buffs in the form of healing or shielding. Now, the design decision to promote additional utility at the expense of damage for enchanters is up to debate by the community. Some argue that lanes will be a little more boring now since you'll be taking away that laning agency that supports love to have, while others argue that more utility fulfills the champion fantasy for enchanter type of players. Both sides do have their valid arguments, but as a small content creator, I'll just be focusing on how to best abuse the current meta. In this video, I'll be talking about how to best play Sona support. If you've watched any of my previous guides, you'll probably have figured out that I tend to play champions that are a bit lower on the mechanical side. And guess what? Sona has no skill shots. Other than her ultimate. Her skill expression really comes from better positioning in lane, since you have to stack ability haste based on the frequency of skills used against enemies or on your teammates. She is undeniably one of the best scaling supports in the game, which work extremely well with crit or attack speed ADCs such as Zeri, Kog'Ma, or Jinx. I'll be going over her items, runes, skills, and playstyle in this Sona support guide. When it comes to Sona's best build, it's relatively straightforward. All you really need to do is build towards these two core items, Archangel Staff and Moonstone Renewer. Your first purchase after your first back should almost always be Tier of the Goddess in order to gain as much mana as possible. With such low cooldowns on Sona support, you'll be spamming abilities non-stop in the mid to late game, meaning a healthy mana pool will definitely be required. Converting Tier into an Archangel Staff gets you an item that has the perfect stats for Sona with ability haste, mana, and AP. This item does transform to Seraph's Embrace once it is fully stacked to 360, which is an absolute game changer for Sona support, since you will be that much more difficult to be one shot with the additional lifeline passive. Now, don't go rushing towards building Archangel Staff, you simply just want to patiently stack your Tier of the Goddess. Instead, you can work towards building your actual first legendary item, Moonstone Renewer. Your job as Sona is to simply heal, and that's exactly what Moonstone Renewer does heal and shield. It essentially provides your ADC with up to 70% additional heal and 80% additional shield. Try and pick up a Lucidity Boots along the way and make sure to convert your support item to Dream Maker. You'll have then completed your core item set by around the 20 minute mark. You literally just need to press W on cooldown with this build and it's an auto win. Now that you've built your 4 core items, you will likely only have enough gold for the rest of the game to choose one of the following two items, Ardent Sensor or Staff of Flowing Water. To keep it brief and simple, you will want to purchase an Ardent Sensor if your win condition revolves around winning with auto attackers, while you will want to go with Staff of Flowing Water if your win condition revolves around AP damage. If you're really on the fence between these two items, I usually opt for Staff of Flowing Water since it will provide yourself with more AP and the 10% movement speed buff is good in any scenario. As long as you position properly in teamfights and stay alive, 
you can very easily shield and heal thousands of damage in a single team fight. Positioning is extremely important on Sona, and you want to make sure to play cautiously in team fights. Your only source of hard CC is your ultimate, so generally I like to use it to peel when you head into the mid to late game. For runes, there are two main rune pages you can take depending on your lane matchup. In general, you will want to choose Sona in matchups that are less volatile, which allow you to buy time and scale up into the late game. Sona thrives against playing against Wardens and Enchanters, who generally want to play a more passive lane style. Fortunately for you, Sona arguably outscales any Enchanter and Warden type of champions, so the longer the games go, the bigger advantage you get. For runes, I will choose the Keystone rune Aerie. This keystone will provide you with ample amount of shielding, but it also provides you with some additional damage every time you poke their bot lane with your Q. Q has a sizable enough range such that it can be safely procced during the laning phase. You will want to complete this rune page with Manifold Band, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. The secondary tree I like to take is Bone Plating and Revitalize for some extra tankiness, healing, and shielding. The other lane matchup consists of a scenario I generally try to avoid. As strong as Sona is, she is very difficult to blind pick because the enemy team can counter her with an all-in type of support. When counter picks do happen in draft, you will have to face up against aggro champions like Leona, Nautilus, or Blitzcrank. In these hook compositions, I'd recommend taking the defensive keystone rune called Guardian. Guardian provides you with a substantial shield any time you or a nearby ally take lethal damage. This shield lasts 2 seconds and ensures you and your ally aren't killed instantly due to a potential misposition. Guardian is followed by Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. For the secondary tree, I prefer taking Presence of Mind and Legend Tenacity. For Rune Shards, I take 8 Ability Haste, 2% Movement Speed, and 65 Flat Health. For skill upgrades, there are two possible paths. The first path is to take 3 points on Q, then max W, then E. In easy to harass lanes, 3 points in Q will allow you to poke in lane and apply strong laning pressure. Alternatively, if you don't feel comfortable stacking your Q and are worried about aggressive poke from the enemy bot duo, go for a standard W max build. Maxing points in W is my preferred playstyle, since you just want to maximize the shielding and healing potential you have. Depending on what skill upgrades you decide to choose, you should be able to have rank 5 W by either level 9 or 10. After level 11, you can either finish upgrading your Q for more damage, or you can max E instead. Riot recently buffed E such that, at max rank, you have an additional 18% movement speed for your teammates. Lastly, I want to touch upon three core concepts that will help your overall Sona gameplay. The first gameplay tip applies to your aggressiveness in lane to farm stacks with your Q. Overall, you want to poke with your Q only when it is safe to do so. It's not really worth trading a stack for Q if it severely compromises your positioning in lane. If I can get into auto range, that also means I should be able to get a Q ability off as well. I'd recommend going into the practice tool before each gaming session to get a good feel of what your Q range should be in order to maximize your potential in farming passive stacks and gain up to 60 ability haste. The second gameplay tip revolves around Sona's ultimate. Her ultimate has a short but somewhat noticeable cast time. This means you will have to somewhat preemptively cast your ultimate in order to either engage or peel effectively. Unfortunately, you cannot buffer your ultimate with flash to reposition your ultimate. Use your ultimate with purpose to engage on priority targets or as a peeling tool to ensure you and your backline do not die. If I were to give an estimate, I would say I use Sona's ultimate as a peeling tool 75% of the time and an engage tool 25% of the time. The last gameplay tip is a bit more advanced, but if you've made it this far into the video, you might as well learn now. Don't worry if you're unable to optimally use this passive when first starting to play her. Mastery of this passive will come with time. Essentially, after every third ability, Sona gains an enhanced auto scaling with her level for what is known as a power cord. Her power cord can be modified in three ways based on her last ability used. If you use Q as your third ability, your next auto will do even more enhanced damage as well as an additional 30% bonus magic damage. 
If you use W as your third ability, your next auto will reduce the enemy's damage by 25% plus an additional 4% per 100 AP. If you used E as your third ability, your next auto will slow the enemy target by 50% plus an additional 4% per 100 AP. Numbers aside, what this means is that you will want to use your power cord Q when you are on the offensive in lane or have a numbers advantage in teamfights. You will want to use your power cord W when preventing an enemy carry or assassin from bursting you, and you will want to use your power cord E to manipulate the distance between the enemy and your allies. It can be difficult to coordinate the most optimal power cord usage in hectic teamfights, but try to slow down and really think of which power cord is most suitable for each situation. Here are the power cords in simple terms. Power cord Q means big damage. Power cord W means no damage for you. Power cord E means slow down. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button too. It really, really does help. If you have any other tips or builds for Sona support, please let me know in the comments below.